Welcome back. This is tutorial number two of three on how to recode a Blu-ray into an MKV keeping the subtitles. In this tutorial, we're going to need BD Rebuilder. You can download it from this link right here. We're going to need FFD Show. We're going to need the Matroska Splitter. And we're also going to need AVI Synth. Now, these are the links for you to download all of those. They are freeware. But if you want to just go to the forum, you can read more information about BD Rebuilder and all the links to this stuff is also on this page. Now I've already downloaded everything. I'm going to go ahead and start installing. And we're just going to leave everything on their defaults. We're not going to check any of the extra boxes. Okay. And we're going to do this one. And again, we're not going to check any of the boxes. We're going to leave everything on the defaults. Okay, and we're not going to run any of the configurations at the end either. Because when we first start our BD Rebuilder, that's going to be done for us automatically. I'm going to install the Matroska Splitter. Again, not checking or unchecking anything. Click Close. And here's my BD Rebuilder that we've already downloaded. We're just going to go ahead and extract it. Okay, that way it's ready when we come back up. And I'm going to restart right now just like you should and I will see you back in just a second. And we're back. So now we're going to open up our coding tools, open up our BD Rebuilder revision 42.04 and we're going to right click on the BDRB file run as administrator and the reason that we need to run it as administrator is because this pop-up is going to come up and if you're not in administrator mode it will not allow it to reconfigure your FFD show for the settings that it needs so make sure that you run it as administrator at least the very first time that you run it it'll give you this it appears your Windows 7 is not configured and would you like BD Rebuilder to do this for you yes and then it tells you your Windows 7 system has been successfully configured to use FFD Show with BD Rebuilder. Click OK and it will open up. There it is right there. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that all of our settings are correct. We need to go under settings. Under output options isn't really going to matter because we're not dealing with an actual physical disk. So we go under encoder settings. First thing we're going to change is to high priority because when I'm coding I don't do anything else on my computer. I just let it code and uh, it's going to be useless to try and do anything else when you're doing that so just set it to high so it has the utmost priority under encoder settings again uncheck automatic quality settings then go back to encoder settings again and it'll open up a new menu I always choose the highest or very slow the reason being if I'm going to spend the time to code it I want it to be the best it can be I'm not going to try and do it as fast as possible and end up with a larger file size when I can take a little more time, have a better quality video, and be a smaller uh, file size. And I'm going to uncheck the one pass. That will make sure that it's doing a two pass instead of a single pass. Now doing the two pass takes more time, but like I said, it will result in a better uh, file quality and a smaller file in the end. Under setup, now we are going to click uh, our English if it's not already clicked in yours and under subtitles uh, you can uncheck it because really none of the subtitles have been working in BD Rebuilder every time I've used it hence the reason we're doing a tutorial number three so it's kinda pointless to have them checked because they won't show up anyway uh, and you want to get rid of the limit one track we're gonna go down here and we have do not uh, convert do not recode keep HD audio and we can get rid of that because that's only for the actual movies movie playback loop we don't need remove the work files after rebuild that basically after the program finishes making your movie it's going to automatically delete its temporary files and that way you don't have to manually do it just in case you forget you know you could end up with 15 30 gigs of movie files sitting on your computer that you forgot about and just taking up space for no reason so I always check that just to make sure and let's see we're gonna go down use the X264 and also unblock the chapter skip on titles and I'm doing that because I'm gonna show you something in tutorial number three about the chapters and then we're gonna click save 
We're going to go under Mode, and because we're not doing a full backup, because we're not doing it from disk, we're going to do Movie Only Backup, and then go to Alternate Movie Only. Okay. Now this is automatically checked, and we're going to scroll through and look for MKV Container 1920 by 1080 with intact audio. That's the HD audio. So click that, Constant Rate Factor, and automatically crop black borders. Click Save. Now our big thing is we need to import our MKV from our very first tutorial and here it is now before we can import our MKV we need to choose a working path I'm going to choose my desktop now the biggest thing about choosing your working path is making sure that you have at least double the gigabyte size of your original file I know that our original file was 12.4 so we need to make sure that we have an additional at least 25 gigs to work with using BD Rebuilder. Now the reason you want to do that is if you run out of space during the recode you are going to lose all of the work that you put into it including the time. So if it coded for four hours and you run out of space, guess what? You're going to have to start all over again. You can't just erase some stuff from your hard drive and pick up where you left off. Once it errors out, you're done. You start over. So make sure that you choose a path that has plenty of space. Now to get our source path, because we're not using a Blu-ray disk, we're going to go to File, Import, and Video File, MKV, and we're going to choose the original Make MKV one that we made in tutorial number one. Click it, click Open. It's going to start collecting the audio and video streams from the MKV. It will take just a few seconds, so when it gets up there, I will come back on. Okay, so we're coming down on the last 10% of the import of the audio and video streams. Now, since I'm using my desktop as my working path, here are the files that it's placed on there so far for this process. Now, once it gets to 100%, it's going to start basically building a fake Blu-ray folder on my desktop or my working path in order to recode the movie because it needs to be in a Blu-ray source format for it to do that. So now it has placed this folder on my desktop called Imports for the BD source structure. Now once this folder gets created completely and this process is done, this folder will have files in it the exact same size as your MKV file. So since our MKV file is 12.4, our imports folder will be 12.4 because it's basically built a Blu-ray from our single file. So when this process is done, I will come right back on again. So now we're almost to the end of it building our BD source structure in this folder called imports. And when it finishes here, it's going to actually show you the movie file and the audio file. There it is. And now you can see your source path actually says desktop imports and the name of your MKV file. And remember this MKV was 12.4 and inside your imports folder it's 13.1 so it's actually a little more hence the reason that I said you need to make sure that you have double the space because now we're going to be coding using BD Rebuilder in the same spot and that's going to take up some more space so now that we've got all of this stuff imported and ready to go we can just go ahead and click our backup button and it's going to start processing now I'll pull these files over, but here's some more folders that I just put on my desktop, the work files and the any file. Now, when the process is done coding, those files inside the work files folder will disappear because remember under the setup, we checked delete work files when the process is done. Now, when the process is done, it will tell you on the bottom that it's complete. Now, you can also go in here and set it to auto shutdown right here just click that if you set it up at night like I do I usually set it up at like 10 or 11 at night when I go to bed click auto shutdown and that way it automatically shuts down the computer when the process is done now if you want to do that make sure that you have your power settings set to where your hard drive and your computer don't spin down after 20 minutes uh, or make sure that it stays on until the process is done so make sure that you've got those settings correct and you should do it very easily by letting it set all night and then when you wake up in the morning you can fire up your computer and the file will be on your desktop. Now I will come back on as soon as this is done coding I will put in the next section of this tutorial.
So BD Rebuilder has finished recoding our MKV into a smaller MKV. I'm going to show you a screenshot from mine because I actually did mine last night. And you can see here by looking at the time, uh, it ended at 11.37 in the evening. Now I started around 7.30ish. You can't see it because I can't scroll on the screenshot. But roughly took around four hours for me to code this movie. And I'm running on a quad core 6600 with 4 gig of RAM and an 8800 GTS graphics card. So if your system is less than that, it's going to probably take a little more time to code. If your system's better than mine, you may get it done a lot quicker. So once it's done, it's going to place this file on your working directory, or mine is my desktop, and it's called make mkv underscore ep6 underscore 01. Now they've added a 01 to it because that way there's no conflict with my original file that's also in my working directory. But you can see right here, my original is 12.4, and my new one is 4.32. So basically, one third the size of the original file. And the video quality is nearly impossible to tell the difference between the two. So in tutorial three coming up, I'm going to show you how to add the subtitles from this one back onto your recoded file. So I will see you in tutorial number three.